if you're concerned about electrosmog, that being, you know, just electrical pollution coming from wireless devices, um, one thing you can do to test your environment is to use an RF meter like this. Now RF meters are available from you know as little as $30 uh, for some very basic models right up to you can pay tens of thousands maybe even a hundred thousand dollars for a very expensive RF meter. Measuring radio frequencies and by radio frequencies I mean uh, mobile phones, cordless phones, um, anything in that higher band is intrinsically a difficult thing to do. No two meters will give exactly the same reading. However, if you're looking for a reasonably priced meter that would give you a very good indication of radio frequencies, I found this has been an, would be an excellent choice. Um, you can look, put it aside a much more expensive meter and it will definitely tell you when there's um, high frequencies in your environment. For instance, if you took it near a modem, or if you took it near a cordless phone base station, mobile phone mast, things like that, this will let you know whether you're in a field which is unhealthily high. So it's excellent if you're just wanting to check your home or business for hotspots so you can minimise your exposure. So the, the advantage of this meter is it is triple axis, so it means it's measuring three directions at the same time. So you can sort of get an average of what the, the microwave level is where you are. In Australia, the, the accepted way of reading is um, power density in microwatts per square metre. So all you do is you just turn the on button on and you'll see we'll come in here and we push, to get the right units we push the enter button twice and you'll see here we're in microwatts per square metre um, or milliwatts per square metre. So at the moment there's a little U there and that denotes microwatts if there was an M instead next to the W there, that would mean we're in milliwatts, which is a thousand times higher. So right now, we're in a field of 1.9 to 2 microwatts. It's very quiet. You know, for suburbia, it's, it's a pretty quiet level. Um, we're on the Sunshine Coast in Budrum, um, and where we live, it's a fairly low um, EMF, you know, for radio frequencies levels. If I was in Brisbane or somewhere like that, it could be in the hundreds or thousands because the electrosmog down there, I've, when I've measured it, has been extremely high. It's very, very saturated. So not a bad level. So you get your base reading outside the front of your house and then you go inside and you can then have a baseline to see what your devices are throwing out into the house and what's actually going on in your bedrooms, your living room, etc. So we'll, we'll have a look at what some wireless devices do to this reading. So remember it's one or two microwatts outside. We'll go in now and we'll have a look at what happens when we go near a wireless device. So fortunately the RF levels, that's radio frequency levels in our home, are extremely low for suburbia. We're sort of normally between say one or two um, microwatts, maybe up to five microwatts, depending on uh, what side of the house we're on because we do pick up obviously a little bit of Wi-Fi coming from the neighbours. We do get mobile phone reception so we're going to get a little bit of a weak signal coming into the house. But overall the levels that we're getting in here are acceptable by Australian building biology standards. So just to give you a rough idea, the Australian building biology standards recommends under 10 microwatts in the living space and under 5 microwatts in the sleeping space. And even at these levels, um, biological effects have been shown to occur. However, most people, if you're not hyper-electromagnetically sensitive, will do quite well if the levels are below these. So if we just have a look. So the baseline in the house is, you know, one, two microwatts. It's, it's very, very low. It's a very quiet environment. We don't have a modem. We don't have a cordless phone. So there's no wireless devices transmitting. So let's have a look when we turn something on. Alright, so I'm going to plug in our old cordless phone um, and see what happens. So we, I'm not making a call or anything, it's just that what the base station throws out. So we're currently on 1.4 microwatts. So just remember, when you're reading this, micro is a little u on this side, it says u. And then when it changes to milliwatts, the reading has gone up a thousand fold, so the U disappears and a little M appears next to the W. Alright, so 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1
and now we're plugging in the cordless phone base station now we're just jumping up so we've jumped up to 34 but it's not just 34 it's 34 milliwatts so that's a thousand times higher and 34 so it's a massive increase we're going 37, 38, but this is milliwatts, remember, not microwatts. We've gone from 1.5 microwatts to up to 40 milliwatts, and we're about a meter away from the cordless phone base station. The phone is not in use. This is transmitting this strong radio frequency signal 24-7, whether you're using the phone or not. Now many people are completely unaware of this, they have their phone next to their bed, their, the phone base station on their desk, and they're sitting in levels that are hundreds if not thousands of times higher than the recommended level by the Australian Building Biology Industry, which recommends under 5 microwatts if you're in a sleep area, under 10 microwatts if you're in a work area. So we've got 33 to 40 milliwatts, so almost a thousand times higher than the acceptable levels. Alright, let's look at another device that people frequently use. I'll unplug the cordless phone. And we see it drops right back down again. right down to 3, 2, 1 microwatt. So we're down very quiet again. And now I'm going to plug in a baby monitor. So we've got over here we've got a baby monitor. Let's see what happens when we plug in a baby monitor. Alright, so we've, we've got still very low readings. I'm just going to turn the on button on this baby monitor. We'll see what happens to the levels. We're on about 1.5 microwatts, which is, you know, it's very quiet. We hit the button, we're jumping up to 87 milliwatts. So remember, milliwatt is a thousand times higher than a microwatt. So we've jumped from one and a half microwatts to 88 milliwatts. Well over a thousand times higher than what we were at before. So if you've got a baby and you're monitoring them, they're being exposed to well, we, you know, by building biology standards, would be considered dang very dangerous levels of radio frequency. These radio f children are far more vulnerable as well, having thin skulls and developing bodies. They're far more vulnerable to cell mutation and damage, you know, from these frequencies. So baby monitors, while they're a very practical idea, obviously um, not great if you're concerned about your child's health. I'll turn it off again. And then we see it drop quickly back down. Alright, let's look at something else. We'll look at, for instance, a mobile phone. So right now my mobile phone is in um, airplane mode. And as you can see, the signal is very quiet because it's not emitting any EMFs. Now I'm just going to turn it to flight mode off. And we see, yeah, it spikes up to 400, 300 milliwatts, so that's you know, extremely high as it just checks in and checks for messages. So we're sort of 300 milliwatts this close to the phone, so if it's next to your ear, you're, you're getting very, very, very high levels. Alright, so right now my phone has got the mobile data off. You know, it's higher than the base level. The, the level we were having in the room is 1.5, we're up around 10, 14 microwatts. I turn mobile data on, let's see what happens. So this is for accessing the internet and emails. It's just jumped to 380, 400 milliwatts. So a milliwatt being a thousand times higher than a microwatt, we're getting massive readings. So one way of minimizing your exposure with a mobile is to simply turn the data off. Um, we go from you know 400 milliwatts. Takes a little bit to drop off. And we're going to see it drop down into the microwatts again. It's a very simple way 
to minimize your exposures. Just only turn your data on when you want to access the internet. Um, and when you finish, just turn it off again. You're going to um, greatly reduce your exposure to mobile phone radiation.